Hi, this is Damon Tordini with Hawkridge Systems, and we're going to talk about the drop test study in SolidWorks Simulation Professional. SolidWorks Simulation is the built-in analysis tool inside SolidWorks that allows users to check their SolidWorks models for a variety of potential failures, the most common of which being a simple stress test to see if material would yield from certain forces, pressures, fixtures, or other loads. However, just like in the real world, there are a variety of situations that have different physical conditions occurring that a user might need to check for. The stress analysis capability in SolidWorks Premium and other simulation packages is what we call a linear static analysis. It doesn't always account for all the physical conditions that might be important. For example, if you wanted to simulate dropping an object onto a hard surface, you might need to use a dynamic simulation that could account for the changing loading conditions and any vibration effects that may occur. In addition, depending on the magnitude of the loading conditions happening, you might need to use a nonlinear analysis to correctly identify the large permanent deformations of the material versus the small temporary deformations that a linear study might show. So to duplicate a real-world physical drop test Inside SolidWorks, a nonlinear dynamic study might be needed. That type of study is found in the SolidWorks Simulation Premium package. However, since doing this type of drop test is such a common need, a special study called Drop Test was created specifically for that application and included in Simulation Professional. This study has a streamlined setup, which will make it much faster to create and run the analysis versus the nonlinear dynamic study. To run a drop test, you need to turn on the SOLIDWORKS simulation add-in, and then make sure to create the correct study type. Instead of a normal static analysis, I'm going to pick the drop test button. When the drop test study is created, the analysis setup tree looks a bit different than most other simulation studies. There's no menu to enter forces or other loading conditions, and that's because the setup of the drop test is mainly related to how high you're going to drop the object from or how fast it might be going when it impacts a surface. The materials and contact in the assembly can be set up in the same way as a stress analysis, and then the drop test setup defined from a simple menu. Here I'm defining the drop height of the object at 3 feet, and I'm measuring that from the centroid of the model, but I could also pick the lowest point on the part. And then I need to set the direction for gravity, which defines the orientation of the product. Here I have a reference plane that I modeled, and I'm putting in a value of 9.81 meters per second squared, which is the default for Earth at sea level. For the target, which represents the ground or floor, I can either choose to have that normal to the plane of gravity, which I've already selected, or I could choose another reference plane, perhaps one that was at an angle, to simulate impact into an angled surface. I also have the option of making that surface a non-smooth surface with a certain friction coefficient and also accounting for some flexibility in the surface by changing to the flexible target option and inputting a stiffness value. I also need to define some result options in the drop test such as how long I would like to run the simulation after impact and how frequently I'd like to save my result plots. Once the analysis runs, I'm presented with the same types of results as I would get in a normal stress analysis, such as stress and displacement and strain. The main difference here is that I now can view these results over time, and by animating them, see what the response of this model would be to impact. Here the spark plug is landing on the ground electrode, and we can see that the stresses increase rapidly after impact, well exceeding the yield stress of 620 megapascals. So of course, this being SOLIDWORKS, I can design some packaging to try to prevent that failure from happening were someone to drop the spark plug in this way. All I need to do is duplicate my study and switch that to the modified version of the model and run the analysis again. Here I can look at my stress plot a second time with the section clipping enabled. 
And I can also see that, of course, the stress has to this time been reduced thanks to the cushioning of that impact by the cardboard tube that I've added. I can create time history graphs to track those stress values over time in more detail, seeing here that the stresses don't spike until about a tenth of a second in when the cardboard tube has collapsed and hit the ground electrode. I can also confirm that the maximum stress isn't above the yield point, meaning this packaging should be enough to protect my spark plug. By using the drop test study in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional, I've been able to account for the real-world physics that are important for this problem without a lot of extra setup work, and by doing that, tested a packaging design without breaking yet another spark plug, at least not for today.